It's episode 996, and it's a relevant podcast. Here in Orlando, I'm your host, Cameron Strang, and joining me from Loverland, Virginia, is Jesse Carey. Hello, hello. From Austin, Texas, author, speaker, podcaster, Jamie Ivey. Hey, guys. And from just down the street, in the very uncool part of the Met- Dallas <laughs> Metroplex, downtown Emily Brown. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> what an intro. She's more on the Fort Worth side of things. Okay, we have a great show in store for you today. Coming up later, Ben Hastings. We love him. We love Seasons. We love all his, his worship music. But I have a few things that we got to talk about here at the beginning of the show. Number one, I am wearing Virginia for Lovers, J- Virginia's mm-hmm. for Lovers t-shirt that I got at the beachfront souvenir shop next to the bongs and the katana plates. Number two, <laughs> Jamie Ivey is recording from a TV tray. It is. It is <laughs> very Jamie, odd. It's not a TV like, tray. It, no, how Cameron? First off, how dare you? What I told this <laughs> before, Jamie. You is exactly right. Before she signed on, Jamie's podcast setup appears to be out of off the cover of a podcasting magazine. Like if you took Truly. like like a cool design magazine and <laughs> and and said, here is what a modern professional podcaster. This is what their setup looks Jessie, like. Jesse, thank James you. Really what are you like. talking about? She has a laptop on a little TV okay. tray that she okay. moves okay. off and No, off. no. You can't, Cameron, what you're missing, it, 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 Jamie, can I Can I just say one word about your setup real Please. quick? Please. Yes, as long as it's nice. It is a perfect <laughs> size table. One, it's like this very nice looking very thick, either uh, it's not a sort, TV sort of tray. First or of all, reclaimed, yes, reclaimed wood she from a, a furniture a, store. Yes, a, lov- a lovely palette, and the and the size of the table is actually perfect because it doesn't obstruct the view of anything. It allows her to have mobility, hold her beverages, and very cleanly hold the laptop. Do you know why? An- do you know why the furniture store sells that? It slides under your couch like the it little does. feet, so <laughs> yeah, you can eat a t- dinner while you're watching TV on the couch. It is literally or so you could work and have your podcast open when you're podcasting so I can have true. all my things I need for you guys. Thank you, Jesse, because this <laughs> is how I do interviews for my real show. But I my, this is a real show. That was bad <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> for my podcast. But I don't have the table here. I just Jamie, sit and look at people like this. None of these episodes have ever been released. This is just for <laughs> our amusement. <laughs> this is just an excuse to talk to you. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is purely amusement. Well, can, can I make one quick note? Please. I feel like we breeze past the dinner tray thing. If that is a dinner tray... <laughs> Which, which it's not. Which I'm I'm disputing it. I think it is a. Perf- it looks like it's custom made for this, Jamie. Thank and, you. But look at But I slides. will say this. <laughs> it's just sliding it under her chair. Like You're not helping, Jamie. That's what- <laughs> but I will say this: if it is a dinner tray, dinner tray design and technology and aesthetics have come a long way since my grandparents' house because Truth. they were the only Truth. other people I knew that had dinner trays, mm-hmm. and they were like little fold up things that were kept beside the couch. Right. And, and it seems like when I was a kid and I would go over to my grandparents' house, I was like, why doesn't every home mm-hmm. just have a stack of dinner trays right in the living room? Right. Because my grandparents knew what was up. Right. And what was up is eating in front of the television. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That's true. Like, it's a great experience. And I feel like modern households, the dinner tray is not a thing anymore. Am I wrong about that? It seems like most people are hunched over an ottoman or something. I think that you are table. right about this, but I'm telling you, I'm not a fan of eating dinner in front of the TV. I, I like family sitting down at the table, all the things like that. Okay, but, that's your privilege showing. Some of us don't have that option half the time. Yeah, right. Thank you okay, very much. Okay, I'm sorry. So for my family, this is what I prefer. But I'll tell you, there are a lot of times we're getting, sitting around the t- in, the, in, the di- in the living room watching a show, uh-huh. and Jesse... If I had some TV trays, it would be so much easier to eat because yesterday I spilt my dinner all over the chair because I was trying to <laughs> balance it on the side while I got up to get a napkin. So I am I think TV trays need to have a comeback. My couch is is embarrassingly stained and I have two small children, <laughs> so it's, we're not upgrading until, you know, they're old enough to exactly. reliably not spill things. But most of it is because dinner trays have fallen out of fashion. And I'm sitting there <laughs> eating a bowl of soup 
or or, or a bowl of cereal. <laughs> what do you mean a bowl of soup it? in your lap? That is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I, I, a bowl of cereal, like in the morning, okay, okay, cup okay. of coffee, sure. bowl of cereal. I'm sitting there holding it like you know some kind of savage who who's never seen a dinner tray before. I know they exist. I c- I'm old enough to go buy one if I yeah. wanted, and it would be a total game changer. But for some reason, I, I I constantly find myself either hunched over the coffee table or holding it in my lap, and inevitably, to your point, Jamie, it spills all over the couch, and then you got a big soup big stain. mess on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed because like most of the ones like West Elm, other furniture stores, the if they have a little tray like that that slides under the arm of the chair or couch, it's for drinks. They call it a little drink mm-hmm. tray. It's smaller. Uh-huh. Jamie found the full size old school. You could put a plate of food on it. Oh, She's yeah. got her laptop on it. She's got the full size you guys, tray. You have a plate and a salad and a, and yes. like your water. Yes, it's from it's yeah. from World Market. I'll send you the link. You can get yourself one, Jesse. It'll look really great in your living room. There you go. Thank you. I feel like I need to come clean about something. I am using a TV tray right now. <laughs> <laughs> on my laptop. <laughs> I'm also sitting on my two year old niece's bed with a t- like with the tray table in front of me. I actually have two, so I can like hold my um my water bottle and everything because it's a very small tray table but the entire time i was silent because i was like ah, they're talking about me but no, Emily, <laughs> Emily, we're talking about how you're playing chess and we're all out here on a chess board <laughs> so yeah. my brother's playing chess because i don't own table trays but he does that's or, true well, his wife bought them i know she bought them uh, another thing we need to, do, you know, the listener needs to be aware of i i did not fall asleep till 4 30 in the morning so who knows what's going to happen? And wow. lastly, Hold on, can, can we can we unpack that for a moment? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah, like what were you? Was what? That, yeah, uh, were, were you? Hey, do whoa, we, were you binge watching the Kardashians again, or was it? Were you? No, I've I've tried to do the thing of no social after nine, uh, so I'm not. I'm like trying to like turn things off and yeah. turn my mind off. I mean, full transparency. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Like, what do you do or how do you know when you're stressed out? Mm-hmm. I, I don't sleep and my mind's going and that's what was going on. I just couldn't turn my brain off last night. Mm-hmm. I tried everything. <laughs> it was just like, oh, well. Uh, but but the last thing is we are recording this two hours after our normal time because Jesse was locked out of his studio. <laughs> and so, please, right, I haven't man. talked to you yet. What happened? And what? why were you... Why does only one person have a key? Like, why did you have to wait for a locksmith to show up? What happened? Well, because we installed a new... Like, there's multiple points of entry. But as with any studios, there are... It, it, these house very expensive equipment, right? And Cameron, you've walked around... You've been to... Mm-hmm. to my studio space. It's in a pretty highly pop, like pedestrian area. Mm-hmm. And there are, uh, let's just say in the evenings, um, people are walking down alleys doing magic tricks left and right. Exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. that type of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Got it. Got so it. There's a door that comes down, yeah. which can only be th- like big corrugated metal that uh-huh. can only be opened from the inside. Right. As, as like a, uh, you know, protective measure. There's another door that can be open with like, you, you know, uh, an electronic key, but it also has a deadbolt that is done in night and morning. Anyway, I don't know if someone tried to break in at night, but the deadbolt key, it wouldn't turn like no, none of the keys that went in there would turn the deadbolt. Now, I tried to use the credit card method, which is <laughs> sliding the credit card behind it. Mm-hmm. Remarkably effective in the dorm rooms at ORU. Yeah, no absolutely. dorm room was safe <laughs> from... <laughs> The, an app Jesse, like wait, Jesse, 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 hold on. So, so at at our used dorm rooms, which are metal doors, you 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 had a room that you could jimmy with the card. I I my door, which was the first door on our floor, people had kicked it in so many times that the metal door had gone concave ever so slightly that it didn't even latch. I could lock it, and people could just walk in. So like I'd see people walking around with my clothes on or like with <laughs> oh. like and I'm like where'd you guy. get that yeah. and they're like oh I just borrowed it I'll just put, I'll put it back later don't worry you know whatever the door was like sort of open so all the time I, even if I locked it because they had kicked it in so many times so you had to do the credit card thing which yeah. did not work oh really and uh yeah and then yeah it was just um, evidently locksmith was having a busy day because we called him at like nine o'clock this morning <laughs> well and, jesse uh, you do work on the seafront have you ever thought that your deadbolts might be rusted salt air oh. like maybe it was more yeah i mean that's certainly a possibility pirates that's a possibility <laughs> riffraff, <laughs> i don't know 
I don't know. I don't care, to be honest. Pirates. <laughs> who knows? Who knows who's sailing in overnight? You, you know? need a door. You need a door like we have where you just punch in a number and, yeah. and then you don't need a key. Well, I, well, we do have the electronic, but we do one more extra as Got a it. precautionary in the evenings. And so there's a lot of um, magicians in his neighborhood. You yeah, got it. Yeah. You're, you're giving away the like security details of <laughs> your studio. Well, that, That's the thing is there's so much street magic happening here that <laughs> we're worried that one of our key passes would easily be pickpocketed by exactly. one of these, yeah. these illusions. And the pirates, what do they have? They have a hook that gets in there yeah, really yeah, easy. Always. You know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we've already seen, you know, how reckless they are with their eyes. So they're peeping <laughs> right up through the lock <laughs> to figure out everything. They're right up on there not worried that if someone could just be on the other side and quickly open it i mean right we know if there's one thing that pirates disregard it's the safety of at least one of their eyes yeah i mean your neighborhood is tourists pirates and, and magicians it is you you can't have well, enough that's a locks. party you can't have enough locks is what i'm saying it, well, yeah. yeah i mean it's i'm not gonna lie it's a blast i mean it's it's <laughs> Come here on Friday night. It's you're going to see a good time. With that you never know what's going to happen. But oh uh, not the not the place you want to store very expensive electronic <laughs> audio. I, I will be honest. They have a they have a lovely office. They have it's it's really cool. It is the strangest location for a cool production facility. It is literally next door. Shares a wall with the. Uh, tourist t-shirt shop where I got this Virginia's for lovers t-shirt and it's and, true I mean it really does it's like a very strange like if you've ever been to Myrtle Beach or or Daytona Beach or something like that that strip of all the tacky stores is where their office is it is a very strange but location for away. a it's hidden away cool you wouldn't company. know it's back here yeah. you wouldn't know it's back there yeah it's true and I will say and there's a basketball hoop back there that we've had hidden away I think did we shoot some hoops I can't remember the kids do. I've thrown I'm I'm the only person here that has thrown a basketball off the top of the the tourist shop and got it into the hoop it's is there I, proof of that I mean eyewitness Eyewitnesses. <laughs> Which in my money, you know, these are trustworthy people here. Is it one of the street magicians? Mm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's one thing. Never trust a magician. Never trust their a magician. Whole, <laughs> their whole gig is deception. Yeah. That is literally <laughs> what makes yep. them good at what they do. Yeah. That's all true. right. Well, I'm just, I was putting all those disclaimers out there because this might go left. We don't know. I don't know. But it's been a very strange morning. Yes. And, uh, just looking at y'all, I can't get past this TV tray situation. <laughs> Two out of four of y'all. It's, are, it honestly is making me hungry. But hungry, <laughs> but hungry for something that's out of the microwave. It makes me want to watch you know? The Office. Like, I want to watch The Office, settle down, have some dinner. That's what I, I want to do right now. A microwave dinner, that sounds perfect, actually. Let me ask you guys this. Is the association that you have with dinner trays when it comes to programming, and maybe maybe this is just me uh, and, and how I grew up, It's if, I'm, if I got a dinner tray... It's the uh, uh, Jeopardy, Jeopardy, or Wheel of oh, Fortune. Wheel on. of Fortune. Yeah, but like I feel like it's just a given. If you're eating on a dinner tray, you're 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 actively participating in a game of Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy. What's well, the post? Else? It's the post news hour yeah. before prime time. You've got you've yeah. got yeah. Th- I mean that's because it's usually eating. like older people and they're eating mm-hmm. at you know five thirty. So we've got right after your local news and then we've yep. got Jeopardy. But I also think this. I also think it's like a late night shift person coming home watching like Three Stooges or something in the eighties, and they've got mm-hmm. their TV tray and like a a cold beer, and they're just kind of maybe sad. I don't know. <laughs> that's why. Just because they're <laughs> alone doesn't mean they're sad, Jamie. I didn't say that. I just said like they worked a long day. They're watching three stages. They have like low mane right out of the carton. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta be and honest. It's not though. like it's not like a craft beer. It's like a, a red. What is it? Blue ribbon beer or something? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. PBR. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a bud heavy. It's an ice cold <laughs> yes. bud heavy. Some 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 low mane. That's uh, you're on the third round with. That is just the never ending <laughs> carton of low mane. You might yeah. moved it, but it's not fully heated. Hold on. Can we? Can, I'm gonna out you, Emily. She is on know. day four of okay. eating Mexican leftovers. Day four. <laughs> oh, wow. On okay. Sunday, she got some chewies from a wedding reception, and she's still eating it. That's how much oh, Mexican leftovers she If she brought she it home from a, a reception, you brought like well, the okay. big box home. Mm-hmm. You didn't go have fajitas for two. Yeah. 
Yeah, my brother's a wedding photographer and he always comes home with leftover food because people always get too much food for weddings. Yeah. And so I, who, he brought who, home. What, what photographer goes around and and no, takes it home? No, he didn't do it's that. It's like families Cameron, at the end are like, like, please take, take this. Take this, so take much. this, take this. Yeah. Okay. No, he's not. I mean... I wouldn't put it past him if he's asking, but I'm pretty sure that the, By the way, thank are you, offered. Thank you for the thousands of dollars you paid me to, <laughs> to capture this event. Does. But I noticed there's some enchiladas over there. Can I? Yeah. Listen, if you've had the beef enchiladas from Chewy's, you will eat them four days in a row. Okay? They're good. They probably and get better. I feel like, I feel like for me... After day three on Mexican, I, I, I'm pushing it. Well, okay, it wait, becomes dude, a plate of dude, nachos at that point. The like, cheese, whatever, the cheese, just put it on yeah, some I don't trust the Chewy's cheese after about 48 hours. Like, I don't care how refrigerated it we is. We scrape the cheese off and then put cheese, new cheese on, if that helps. You're scraping your food to make it edible? Listen, Emily. Cameron, not all of us can just have, you know, new food every day, right? So just maybe hey, some of us have to eat leftovers. Full of enchiladas. <laughs> okay, uh, Jamie, this is, oh, this is, the, this is I thought the it most, was fajita meat. This is the most bachelor thing I will ever admit publicly is I forgot to get groceries, right? And so I, this weekend, I didn't have Cohen. So I was just there. I was here at the house. And I didn't feel like leaving. I didn't feel like ordering anything. So I'm just like, I have stuff. I can figure this out. I emptied out my fridge and my freezer. I have no food. I ate for dinner one night, Cheez-Its, scrambled eggs, because I had two eggs left, Oh, Cameron. and some string cheese. And so like, <laughs> like literally, like I, I have no, yeah, so for me, don't be talking about my fresh food every day. Yeah, um, I do not want to hear any judgment yeah. when you're eating that. And I am lightly scraping off some cheese to put new <laughs> cheese on. Okay. That's called a gourmet meal. Yeah. And it's also called being frugal. <laughs> there you go. My record, my record for one is, is for one meal that I've extended is four. There's a there's a deli by us that serves comically large pastrami sandwiches. You know, <laughs> that lasted me four meals one time. One open face pastrami was was straight up four meals. Did at, you like take it place. home and intentionally like slice it into quarters to like make them normal size meals, or no, is it just I, got, I ordered it at the restaurant and was thinking I'm just going to plow through this thing. Oh, I learned my lesson <laughs> about six okay, bites. That's in. insane. Yeah, I just sent you guys that... an image. Yeah. That has to be a pound. Oh, it's of easily just pastrami. Easily, it's it, it's more than anyone could. It makes my heart hurt it. looking at it. It was hey, I'll say this: great four meals. <laughs> See, <laughs> well, we're moving the show along. Tyler's going to join us. Stay tuned up next for relevant buzz. You're listening to Cherry Glazer. The song is Soft Drink. Well, today's show is brought to you by the Lumo Project. Lumo is a stunning visual Bible uh, series that will help you see the gospel in a beautiful, compelling new light. If you've ever wondered if the gospel has talked about the big questions we face in life today, like addiction or depression or money or doubt, well, yeah, it's all in there. And with Lumo, you can experience Jesus's teachings and story in a compelling new way. Lumo is beautifully shot scripture, straight scripture videos that's appropriately cast, cinematic, incredibly well done. Go check it out. You can check out their free scripture videos by searching the Lumo Project at YouTube and for other free resources, including small group studies that the relevant team might have written. Check out lumoproject.com. That's L-U-M-O project.com. Okay, it's time for Relevant Buzz. Please welcome to the show, Relevant Senior Editor Tyler Huckabee, live and in person from Paris, France. Hey, Tyler, what's going on this week? Bonjour, everyone. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's, it's, I'm, I'm pretty used to it over here because it really is a, it's, it's, 
unlike unlike big american cities where you just kind of like walk around keep your head down you know in new york you're not looking anybody in the eye it it is every man for himself over there you don't smile you don't say anything i looked i looked a guy i looked a guy in this in the eye the other day when i was walking by in new york he punched me in the face just straight up punched me in the face (laughs) Uh exactly and and, and technically mistake you make one time technically cameron you assaulted him. That's a stare looking at someone <laughs> making eye contact in New York City. Is technically, <laughs> technically, yeah, it's, it's a self defense. Yeah. 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 Totally yeah. justified. Yeah. A, punch, yeah. a punch back to a smile is self defense. <laughs> that was his duty to punch you right in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I told Cohen, keep your head down, buddy. Never do that. Again. Yeah. All right. But here, but here, you really do. If you see somebody, they're just like bonjour. They, they you know, they go up and down like bonjour, and and I feel like I should. Do you ever like mind like back? Like, like oh, I don't speak it. I'm in a box. I can't hear you. <laughs> I just wave my little, I just wave my little baguette. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're not. A, although over here it's just kind of like a fe. They just like kind of they don't slap you. They just kind of like push they you away. They take their glove like, off little, and, go, like a, and then just <laughs> 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 they they put their cigarette out on your arm. Oh, gosh. The last time. Oh my gosh! The wow. last time you make that mistake. Hey, before you get into relevant yeah. buzz, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. A breaking news sure. as we're recording this question in the pop oh, culture oh, yeah. space. This morning, I I told them I didn't fall asleep till 4.30 in the morning. So I, at around 4.15, did get my phone out and was scrolling headlines. I wasn't on social media, but I was scrolling Apple News. And I saw this. P- and that put you right to I, sleep, I, basically. Right? <laughs> that, that, I put it this, just drifted right off. Well, at that point. Sweeter than any angel At that song. point, I gave up on sleep and I thought I might as well just start my morning. <laughs> That's actually what I was doing. Yeah. So there was yeah, a. P- yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw this last night. There was a people, people headline that talked about how Sylvester okay. Stallone covered up the I tattoo of his. 25 year wife with his dog, the dog that he starred in the Rocky movies with. And I read this article because I thought that was strange. I, a, I didn't know he had a wife, but B, you know, whatever. And the whole article talked about with quotes the fact that he was going in there to update his wife's face. The mm-hmm. tattoo artist messed it up. It didn't turn out good. So he had no option other than to put a dog on top of it. And I thought, <laughs> that's really weird. But no I guess, other option? I guess you don't want to jack up your wife's face. Why was he changing it? Was he making her aging correctly? I don't know. Anyway, did you see the headline an hour ago? I, she filed for I, divorce? No. <laughs> so what? She filed for divorce after 25 oh, years. Man. So there's this whole oh, article. There's this whole article <laughs> about he covered up the tattoo as a mistake and put a dog there. And then the next day, hours you know, later, funny. I read the, the 20- same article this morning and probably on the same Apple News scroll. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know why. Like, oh, look, there's updates from, uh, the, you know, an active war happening in Europe right now and, 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 and important climate policy. But wait, Stallone got his wife's face tattoo covered? I got yeah. I got to read a 1,200 <laughs> yeah. words on this. So you know? how, how mad are you if you're his publicist? That's what I'm saying. Like the all, all, spin, of forging, all the stuff. Of forging this story. This whole story. Yeah, you're, you're, like, you're like, Sly, Sly, I've got it, man. I've got it. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't, I've got it with the perfect cover. No one's going to see it. No one's got it. All right, check this out. It's so simple. It's so simple. Six hours. Hours later, then, she filed for divorce. Hours, hours. <laughs> the ink isn't even wet in page six, and they've already they've, they've, the the real story is already. I'm leaked. not laughing at all about their separation or whatever is going to happen in their relationship. I'm laughing not. at how preposterous publicists are that they did this Honestly, whole it's the thing about this dog. And the dog, and this the whole, the dog the whole time was like, I told you, do not bring this me into this. Do not bring me into this. And now I'm, I'm tattooed on you. So it makes a lot. Anyway. Oh, um, Cameron, you yes. know how you confess publicly about your yes. eating this weekend? Yes. Well, yes. I would like to confess publicly something that I'm not very proud of. I'm kind of embarrassed of. I used to have a really big crush on Sylvester Stallone. Really? Like, I don't know like, why you're feeling like, shameful. <laughs> that, what's the shame? What's the I mean, I was well, man, man in male history? Have you seen? History, you have you seen you're, you're an Amer- you're an American woman with two eyes <laughs> in her head. I don't see why that should be. This is the the Sylvester Stallone I had a crush on was him in the movie Over the Top. You've seen it, of course. You know what I'm yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, where, where he, oh, yeah. he was arm wrestling incredible. tournament. Yes, to, for that was the Sylvester Stallone that stole my heart. Yes, as a truck driver. It's 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 classic. Yeah, have a confession. It's really. It's really him. embarrassing. I, I like Bruce Springsteen. I have a. He's like, come on, no, you're. So like, Sylvester yeah, Stallone is not that is. good looking right now, you guys. I mean, but back in the day, I thought he was. I'll, I'll say this: according to the image, 
that that People Magazine selected for this story, which I, Cameron, it was him sitting in a chair petting his dog, and he looked fantastic. I he was 75 years old, age. tatted up. I had no idea he had and all these still, tats. I didn't looked, either. He still looked great in that image. But I will say this about the film Over the Top. <laughs> It's so good. On the surface, it seems pretty low stakes. He's a truck driver who gets into competitive arm wrestling. Right. Okay, yeah, that's the elevator right. pitch. How do you raise the stakes? It's arm wrestling for custody of his own son. Okay, so <laughs> he figured it out. You know, so I think good. Stallone has an Oscar for screenwriting. <laughs> Tyler, is that true? Did he, did, I have a, Rocky. For over the top? Or, yeah, Rocky. No, for Rocky. Oh, for Rocky. No, for Rocky. Yeah. You don't question yeah, the man's instinct. Rocky. He's an yeah. Oscar winning screenwriter. Oh my gosh. Remember, he would turn that hat credit, around. He would turn that hat around, and that's when you knew it was about to go down with the arm wrestling. Yeah, and, but but <laughs> but like he went from like boxing, you know, where where and and boxing, not just boxing movies, but boxing movies where the fate of the free world, like he's going behind <laughs> right. the Iron yeah. Curtain on Christmas yeah. Day, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. To, to fight like yeah. a, a Soviet robot. You mm-hmm. know, very high stakes. You yeah. know, people are dying in the ring regularly in the Rocky <laughs> universe. To you know, retroactively winning the both the Cold War and the Vietnam War uh, in in Rambo. Oh, that's to right. The stakes that's- of arm wrestling it, i love it, was, it. It, it i could see why it didn't work what's the writer's room where they're like okay we've done boxing uh what, what what's some <laughs> other fighting well well what if we did like arm wrestling i don't know what if we made like an underground arm wrestling ring yeah i don't know how do we raise the stakes can i ask i never seen the movie how did his son's custody get put on the line with an arm wrestling match it's a fair question <clears throat> it's a fair question it was money was it money I I, th- I I it's been so long since it's been I've so long. seen or thought about yeah. the film over the top. Yeah. Jamie to, watches it every Friday like night. A piece of relevant buzz. <laughs> yeah, this might be a piece of relevant buzz. When Jamie can't sleep at four thirty, she puts in over the top. <laughs> <laughs> she puts on a backwards hat, grabs some low mane, gets the dinner tray out, gets the dinner tray, gets out, a yeah. butt heavy tall boy, <laughs> fires up over the top. Oh gosh, that was like a great night. Honestly, yeah. Her husband and wakes up I'm like you're like what are you doing <laughs> she's got the tray like, in the bed she's like, like this the- is a good part he's about to win he's about to win <laughs> I, I just i just canceled my plans for this evening i'll tell you that right i know i know what i'm doing I know what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, all right, Tyler. What's going on this week? Other than the Sylvester oh, man, Stallone, I, I, I hate to, I hate to leave this dude's rock this dude's rock movie <laughs> chat. That's a different podcast. Although we're actually we're kind of staying in it a little bit because I brought the, the the two pieces of news that I brought. They both do involve celebrities. They are both dudes, uh, but they're both pretty different pe- stories. They're they're but they, but they are anchored by some by some Hollywood a listers here. Uh, this is not the return of of. Uh, of celebrity news from the red carpet yet yet i'm not saying that'll never happen right. i'm just saying that's not what this is the first piece of news that i want to talk about okay do you this this is about a, we have a little story about andrew garfield here now when i say method acting do you guys know what method acting is or do you have an idea of what going method means for an actor i do yeah. isn't it like they become that like they live as that person for months and on set you that's have right. to address them as that person they are not yeah. the actor tom cruise uh-huh. they are they embody the role Hundred percent of the time, which is really right. great right. for night. marriages. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <It's> tragic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's sort of the that's the basic idea. There's a lot to it, and I think a real actor would probably be like, "That's not what method is." But basically, that is the like popular understanding. The easiest way to put it is, you don't break. You get into character, and you don't break character, and you're drawing on your own personal experiences so much that they become almost indistinguishable from the character that you're playing. So it kind of gets there's there's a lot of controversy about like is this good or not a lot of actors have kind of used it as an excuse to be kind of toxic personalities on set uh, and they're like well I was just so deep into character that I had to be a total jerk to you I'm sorry uh, and that's something that come up, came up in a conversation that Andrew Garfield was having with Mark Marin on the latest edition of his podcast where he was talking about getting into character as Father Rodriguez the uh, 17th century Jesuit priest who he played in Martin Scorsese's Silence now this is kind of interesting where he goes a little bit into what's it, what it was was like to go full method uh, as an actor for silence. Uh, he said that this involved uh, this involved for him six months, well, a year of regular fasting, just like the Jesuit priest would have been doing at the time. So he was not eating regularly. It involved abstaining from sex, which I think for a Hollywood celebrity, any amount of time doing that is probably fairly notable. And uh, it also involved studying Catholicism under uh, Father James Martin, the hmm. Jesuit priest who we've had on Relevant many times. He's a well 
well-known author. And, and uh, he talked a lot about how much of an impact that has on him. And he said, he's kind of hinted at this before, even in interviews with us, he's talked about it. But uh, he also, in this, went a little bit deeper than he has before about the impact that it had on him. Um, he said, uh, he said, this was really very cool. I had some pretty wild trippy experiences. I connected with Father Rodrigo so much because he was always, he seems to be always on the knife edge between faith and doubt. He understood that the opposite of doubt isn't certainty and that living with doubt is just as much a part of living with faith as faith itself, which I thought was a pretty mm -hmm. in-depth and nuanced understanding of faith for someone to pick up for a Hollywood actor to pick up from the med, from doing method acting for this movie, for the silence movie. That's crazy. That's He's really done cool. a lot of roles in the last few years around faith. I mean, he did Jim yeah. Baker. He seems, he yeah. did uh, the uh, Mormon, you know, limited series. Oh yeah. Under the banner, under the banner of heaven. Yeah. 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 He did the under the banner of heaven show. Uh, and then obviously he, he did this silence movie and it, it is interesting. He seems to have an interest in it. He stays a little he bit. Did, he did Spider-Man where they did the multiverse, <laughs> uh, which is the spirit realm. But and so he went okay. to heaven and uh, back. Oh, yeah. wow. Right. And sometimes superheroes die and come back. And yeah, the resurrection. Yeah. And that know, scene where he Jesus fell, scene. Yeah, that's like he was on the cross, <laughs> very, and then he was yeah. brought back. That's Superman, yeah. but yeah, but it, you know, they're all kind of the same. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that... I must have fell asleep in that part. <laughs> so all that is extremely impressive. Um, extremely. But I once ate the same pastrami <laughs> sandwich for three straight days, so <laughs> we're all, we all do cool things in life, and not all of us, you know, I made an entire <laughs> meal out of two eggs, some Cheez-Its, <laughs> and a little string cheese thing. I was I it, a meal. it was the same open face pastrami sandwich. And let me tell you, <laughs> the base layer of rye bread getting pretty soggy by day three, but I powered through. Okay. <laughs> so good you didn't want to toast it. You didn't want to take it apart, deconstruct, and then reconstruct it. Cause I oh. would have brought, that would have refreshed oh, wow. it. It was already sort go. of congealing into the sermon. bottom layer of pastrami <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Jesse, did you get it? Do you feel like you have a new understanding of your relationship with God? <laughs> because of the that? pastrami. pastrami. <laughs> did, that, did that open up some new avenues to your? understanding of faith and doubt. I'll say anytime someone pushes themselves and goes through a season of trials, yes. So <laughs> so the answer sure. is yes. Sure. And sure. when you're oh when gosh. you're beyond what you can do in your own strength, you need right. to rely on God. So I mean that was a spiritual journey for him mm -hmm. over those three days. Mm -hmm. Well really and it's was. almost like you had yeah. that little pastrami sandwich and it just kept multiplying yeah, over the days. This is and a the, loads, loads, fish four days. days. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Wow. One person. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, just I didn't want to say the world the word miraculous. I think that gets overused, <laughs> but this was the same open face pastrami sandwich, okay? <laughs> and it was the only thing I was eating for major meals. Now breakfast still have toaster strudel or something. But I was talking lunch and dinner. I was plowing through the pastrom the open face. And I was not going to I think you can use that miracle word. Day one was a breeze. Day one, no problem at all. No problem. I needed to start relying on strength that was not my own by halfway by dinner time day two. Because I knew I had another dinner and lunch ahead of me and here i am today so oh look back gosh. and saw one set of footprints one set of footprints in the scene in the, in the kitchen <laughs> going the carpet going to the kitchen and back there's only one set of footprints yeah. it was four really o'clock day, yeah, day, day three he was carrying me so. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, like, <laughs> technically, are any of these jokes <laughs> technically blasphemy? Ben, ben Hastings. Yeah, I ben wonder ha this every oh, day yeah. on this show. I just got, I just got an email from Ben Hastings. He said no. he's out. He wants nothing to do with okay, this. So Jamie, sorry, Jamie. Real talk. Real talk. I feel like out of out of everyone's, you're the most theologically. You have stupid. the most to lose, is what he's trying to I say. I think I have the most to lose <laughs> here. Sure. How uncomfortable do you get on a regular basis? <laughs> this is what I tell show? you all the time. I just laugh, but I, I'm not going to comment. So you play the tape. I didn't say a word. I didn't say yeah. a word. Yeah. You're, right. you're, play the tape. Your your endorsement of these comments is implicit <laughs> by your laughter. Yeah. You need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you yeah. need to do like the company. The company you keep. That's true. <laughs> show me your friends. I'll show you your future. That's there all I'm saying. It's easier there for us to pull you down than for you to pull us up. Yeah, Jamie. I know. This is an audio medium. The audio. So it, at least some exasperation. Like, oh, <laughs> not again! Oh, man. You guys, <laughs> come on now, you guys. <laughs> all right. What else is going on, oh. Tyler? <laughs> 
All right, so we're going to go to the other end. This is another piece of celebrity news. And this is sort of a, a goofus and gallant situation. I don't mean to, I'm not saying anything bad about either of these actors' performances or work or anything like this, but this is an interesting story that I think is sort of indicative of how a lot of justice and charity work often goes. We're going to be talking about an actor named Brad Pitt. Now, Brad Pitt... <laughs> Bad he just says not celebrity you, you know news, Brad, but it's about you know Brad, Brad Pitt. <laughs> it is about it is about Brad Pitt, but it's not about any of the movies that he's been in. He's he's just un, he became sort of unfortunately the face of this particular piece of news. Um, so back a few years after Hurricane Katrina, Brad Pitt and his foundation, it's called the Make It Right Foundation, which is sort of ironic as we'll see you soon. Brad Pitt's and the Make It Right Foundation decided to offer 107 homes to people who had lost their homes in. And Katrina and the storms. And these were going to be, this was a very, very splashy piece of news at the time. It was very, very exciting. Uh, they had some really big name architects Spl- who were involved in these. Hey, these were going to be. That was insensitive, you saying that it was splashy around Katrina. It was, it was, oh, gosh. I said flashy. <laughs> flashy. 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 I thought you said splashy. Flashy. Okay. Yeah, flashy. Energy of energy efficient homes. So they were going to look cool. They were going to be very, very affordable. We were talking. Don't shake your head at me, Jesse. Don't shake your head. I told you I didn't go to bed till 4 30. No, can't I don't I was, yeah, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> no, I remember covering this back in the day. And I remember the images that I think the, the only reason I have such a vivid memory of this is because back in the day, we did a front matter piece. And I remember we had to contact the Make It Right Foundation. I believe it was Make It Right Foundation that sent us these high res, cool images of, yeah. of the really plans cool for these homes. I, and I remember reviewing them. I mean, this is probably, yeah, I don't know, 10 y- years ago. It was a long time but, ago. But yeah, I remember yeah. thinking that it sounded like a cool initiative, but very, very ambitious. It was, it was very, and now you're kind of getting, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're getting into where we find ourselves at today. So they, they, they did, they built these homes and they gave them at a very, very affordable price to people who had lost their homes in Katrina. But almost immediately, uh, problems started to show oh, up no. in these homes and how they've been manufactured. Uh, this is from, I'm quoting from Vanity Fair here, leaks that cause rot, structural damage and mold, faulty heating, cooling and ventilation systems, electrical malfunctions, bad plumbing. Within the first 10 years, two of the homes had to be fully torn down and an indeterminate number have since been completely boarded up and abandoned because they just wasn't worth, they weren't worth sticking around in these homes anymore. Um, so it's, so since then there's been a lot of lawsuits that have gone thrown around honestly kind of every which way make it right foundation is blaming the architects architects are blaming the lumber manufacturers lumber manufacturers are blaming city officials and you know there was a lot of play there's a lot of like red tape and avenues all this had to go through and it sounds like long story short a lot of different balls were dropped so the make it right foundation and brad pitt have been sued and they ended up settling just this week it was revealed to the tune of 20.5 million dollars wow. it's going to be divvied out into twenty five thousand dollars to everybody who got their home they will all be eligible for twenty five thousand dollars to reimburse them for the repairs that they've had to do over the last few years uh and the make it right foundation i guess to their credit is be is kind of owning this they're saying there was a lot of mis- mistakes we made mistakes other people made mistakes but uh but and this is our attempt to make it right but it also just kind of has to show like you said jesse doing this level of work it's tough like it takes a lot of time yeah. it takes a lot of energy and the bigger you go and i think a lot of people who have been in our audience and, and even here on this podcast who've been involved in christian organizations that have that are, have very well intentioned big dreams for what their charity work could end up looking like uh could end up with a having bitten off a lot more than they can chew and eventually maybe even make things worse than they already were well because these homes it wasn't they weren't just replacing homes that have been destroyed or, or building these were non-conventional building methods and, yeah, and, and yeah. the goal was to have them more environmentally sustainable which which i think it seems like very well intentioned but yeah i think they were sort of it seems to be victims of their own ambitions because they weren't even they weren't just trying to replace a neighborhood that had been almost completely wiped out i think this was in was in the ninth ward these homes yeah, that was, it was the ninth uh, ward. And, That's and, right. you know an area uh, of the the city that was affected you know most, very yeah. dramatically mm-hmm. yeah. um it wasn't just replacing <clears throat> homes with like i said with conventional or even coastal construction methods which can withstand you know storms it was i mean you know everything about it was some sort of new innovation it was like the that, future of home building yeah and the yeah and mm, impoverished yeah. areas mm. and stuff. I have a question though. You said what was the settlement? Twenty something million. Twenty five. Twenty point five. Okay. Yeah, twenty point five. Twenty point five million. And you said every 
homeowner gets twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand times yeah, one hundred and seven people is twenty or two point seven million dollars. So where, who's getting the other eighteen million? There's going to, they're going to be reimbursed for the for for housing, and then a lot of that is also going to end up going to attorney fees. Wow. That's crazy. So yeah, the victims that is get ten percent of the final settlement. That is insane. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is what the, which is more than they asked for. Actually, the the it is in the because the, oh, there are only six only six homeowners were actually named in the lawsuit originally, uh, and this is them taking that and doing and actually giving reparations to everybody. So all important. the rest. This sounds this sounds like a Saul Goodman case to me. That's <laughs> it does sound like a better call it really situation. <laughs> and, and it and it is a you know I'm not trying to besmirch anybody's intentions here. I think they had good intentions, mm-hmm. but like you. You know, if you're trying to, if if you're maybe maybe you don't want to test out all of your home building innovations on people who had just lost everything. Uh, some of the complaints that ended up coming through were these homes looked really cool and they were energy efficient, but they weren't really built for New Orleans summers yeah. for you know for hurricane season. You know, it's just not every just because something looks cool doesn't mean it's ready for prime time, especially not in a place like Louisiana where they have a lot of inclement weather that these architects weren't super familiar with when they built. That's them. crazy. This goes to show like, you know, just because somebody has a great idea to help, you know, maybe don't go out on your own and try to do it, you know, like maybe partner with somebody who's been there, maybe partner with locals, raise people Uh, up who have agency in that local area. I mean, Habitat for Humanity or other housing organizations are there. They know the building codes. They know what to do. Maybe resource them (laughs) and partner with them to propel their work (laughs) versus starting over on your own. I mean, yeah. this is something uh, we don't seen. use like vulnerable people to for a guinea pig test because I think that's like we said, like that was kind of the hard part too. Is these people were they needed a home already? You know, if yeah. this plan didn't work out, it's not like they had another place to go. Like right. they they needed this one. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for Relevant Buzz. Make sure to check in relevantmagazine.com every day where we're covering the intersection of faith, culture, and justice. Uh, follow us on all the socials for the latest. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, everybody. All right, stay tuned. Up next, Ben Hastings joins us. Uh, can somebody get him? I think he wants to quit the episode, but can somebody go <laughs> grab him? I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm on my way out, but I, I grabbed him on the way out the door. Good. He is tied up in a chair. I'll roll him in. Yeah. <laughs> Put a TV tray in front of him. It's like It'll set up fun. real nice like Jamie so we can... Yeah, with a pastrami he, sandwich. Yeah. He'll be good to he's go. Telling he'll me, be good he's to telling go. me he'll talk. He'll do anything. He'll say anything. So I think he'll have a good interview. You can <laughs> no hold All right, stay tuned. I think it might be time to break some habits Be a little less dramatic The past was only practice I'll tell you how I'm feeling right now If you want me to let it go, just say so You're listening to Lovely Demand. The song is Sail Away. Well, today's show is brought to you by World Vision. Women and girls in poverty face more obstacles simply because they're born female. But World Vision knows that when girls' God-given potential is unleashed, extreme poverty doesn't stand a chance. Children are better cared for, families are stronger, and communities are more prosperous. And with your help, a girl can grow stronger, be healthier, go to school, learn her value, marry when she wants and who she wants, and even start a business. To sponsor a girl today, go to worldvision.org slash strong girl. That's worldvision.org slash strong girl. I'm telling you, World Vision does amazing work. I've seen it around the world. Sustainably changing lives. Awesome organization. Go support them. Worldvision.org slash strong girl. Well, our guest today is Ben Hastings. He's a songwriter and worship artist from Dublin, Ireland. You've heard him as part of Hillsong United on songs like So Will I and Highlands, Song of Ascent. Now he's moved to LA where he's working on new music, collaborating with the likes of Judah and the Lion to write songs about the messier parts of faith. Our very own Tyler Huckabee talked to him about how he learned to write worship music from the heart, why he thinks we need to start being more honest in what we sing to God and how we can celebrate God even in the midst of doubt. Here's our conversation with Ben Hastings. So I can find it here. And if you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a world. 
did you grow up like when you because obviously like you said you've been writing for a while were you writing church music and those when you were start first started doing songwriting stuff was that the mission initially no i mean that's a good question i grew up um i grew up in salvation army back in ireland okay and my dad has um always written songs for um for the salvo so he he writes like choral choral music and he would write the lyrics for it and um he works with this other guy in in london he kind of writes the music they come together and um i kind of grew up around that just thinking that was kind of like a normal like a normal thing to do <laughs> uh-huh. and so music was very much just a part of our house um growing up and I guess it's and, and church music because music's such a big part of the Salvation Army with the brass bands and the choirs mm-hmm. and and all, and all that stuff. But when I kind of got my first taste of writing, I was trying to write like I don't know, like fourteen year old like love brick kind of sure. pop pop like indie pop kind of songs. And I did that for for a long time. I did like a I was in an indie band back in Ireland, and that was kind of more the direction I was going in. But when I was, um, when I was 16, I, uh, I stumbled across this United CD in a bookshop and we were on holiday in America. And I, I went into like a, it wasn't even like a Christian store. It was like, you know, when CD shops were a thing, like just a record mm-hmm. store. Uh-huh. <laughs> I went in, I saw the cover. I thought it looked cool. And I, so I bought it, not really knowing anything about it. The and sight then, unseen, just a total cool yeah, cover. Let's get, drive it a shot. Completely. Yeah. It, yeah. it was, uh, look to you that record okay. yeah uh-huh. and yeah so i listened to that and just fell in love with the music and so i think that was probably a part of the what pushed me to start kind of writing kind of god focused kind of songs or spiritual kind of music and it's, so it's kind of cool now that you know all those guys are my friends and yeah. we kind of <laughs> super cool <laughs> yeah super cool um, and we do kind of do that for for fun now I think the reason you often see these journeys of what we'll call it deconstruction is go, go awry or, or go too far, end up with people just walking away altogether and being like, never mind, I don't want anything to do with this. It's because we've had so few models. We've had nobody's taught us how to do it. We, we didn't, you're often doing it very, very alone as a, with, mm. without the community that you oftentimes were close to. Right. So having something, uh, having art, music writing that can sort of mm. chart that for you and let them know that they're not alone in this i think that's very important it's been it's really been missing and uh and sure. so i'm glad to hear i'm glad to hear that you're doing it and i'm glad to hear that you're you're doing it sort of in concert with more positive songs songs of affirmation because at least in my life it's the deconstruction process is really like chapters in a book where i'm like now i'm constructing now i'm deconstructing now right. i'm reconstructing it's more like it goes into it's almost like a garden you know some days this part is dying but this part is doing really well and the other, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean does that make sense so i think Completely, this feels yeah. what you're what you're doing feels way more honest and and true to the experience sure i appreciate that i there was a there was a point when um so chris who's not my manager he would call me like about a year ago before oh no be two years ago now before he was my manager and would just call me all the time being like what are you doing with music like Mm-hmm. You need to really like, you need to make this record. I've been, you was working on a record and, um, he was like, bro, bro, you just need to like put this out there. You need to do it. And I'd be like, I, I know I do, but if I release this record now, it is going to be the most depressing thing that <laughs> anybody <laughs> has ever heard. And I like almost like, um, like, you know, when Coldplay did ghost stories and that was mm-hmm. obviously like a really vulnerable, like a, I guess it had sky full of stars, which really sort of pulled it into like a positive viable thing. But, um, Aside from that, it's so amazingly heartbreaking. And I love that. I genuinely uh-huh. love that uh-huh. that record. But I was like, I don't know if I want to make that my first record, you know, my first solo <laughs> record. I just come out uh-huh. and I'm like, yeah, yeah. And so I really fought in the midst of it for like, I was like, no matter how long this takes, I just got to find the way to see the, the light again, like see the positive. It doesn't mean everything has to be tied up with a bow because I don't think that's going to happen. But I just need to know that like this isn't going to kill me, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. I need to be able to, I need to be able to say that yeah and so um yeah anyway i really wanted to find that in my in my music and in my album before i released it and i think i think i've done i think i've done that i don't know if i've you know yeah i won't know until i look back on it in a few years to actually know if, that's you true. know what i, what yeah, I actually yeah. think about it but that's true I, at the minute it feels like i've sort of I, at least have tried to paint a more so rounded I'll picture you in the valleys all the same no
this is this is not a observation that's unique to me or anything like that but if you're reading through the psalms you come across a great deal of those types of church music that are very very open about not just doubt but depression despair yeah. anxiety things that are very very human but they just but you don't really hear them on Caleb very often yeah, and, uh, right. and that's and that's, <laughs> that's something right. that I think a lot of people find very refreshing particularly about the kind of music you've been doing and I would say particularly lately the kind of music that you've been doing that does feel like it taps into something a little more authentic sure but I, I don't mean to say that other people aren't being authentic when they don't get into that but it's just a different side of the spiritual journey that doesn't right. usually have a place in church music used to yeah. but had but it's been a while it, it, it kind of fell it kind of fell away there for a while and i i think it's helpful because it normalizes that you know you're giving people permission the same way that lady gave you permission to just kind of what you've got here is is yeah. something that may, maybe needs to be expressed C completely i i think you're entirely right because i i do think there's areas of it that are it feels hard to incorporate in our current like sort of church structure or whatever, but the Bible like does it really sort of clearly, like you said, like <laughs> yeah. the, there's whole books dedicated to kind of lament. So it, there has to be a place for it. There has to be a, a space. And I think, yeah, I appreciate you saying that because that is part of what I've been trying to do. And not necessarily, it's not like I set out to be like, Oh, there's a gap in the, in the market or there's a gap in the, <laughs> sure. In the, whatever. I'm no, gonna feel no, no. That. It, it was more like, Oh, I'm actually really feeling, this and i don't know what to do about it and i i, I there was a, there's a, been a lot of like can i say this like should i is this gonna like yeah. um yeah. is this gonna give me too much kickback is this like a lot of that and my ultimate thing was like well it is what it is like if i'm feeling it surely other people are feeling this too and i think what what has maybe inspired me as a part of that journey is trying to because i think it's really easy once you get into that place of um you know like you you have this worldview right and the the it all collapses in on itself and you like kind of you know you, you the ice that you're standing on cracks and you fall underneath into this abyss of chaos essentially like you're like i don't know what i believe anymore i don't know who i am these frameworks that that have held me together are no longer working right and right. and there's a real abandonment in that and i think it's really easy once you fall into that place to start becoming bitter to hit the world to hit the to hit the structures that once held you together because that's almost easier than, um, than trying to dig yourself all the way out of it and back up into, I don't think you can ever go back to where you were like the house that you, that you used to live in will probably never fit you again, but you need to go build a new one. Otherwise you're just going right. to like be on the street yelling at people with houses, you know, like it's like, right, right, right. And so I, I, I feel really passionately that what, and I kind of really tried my best to, to go on that journey as honestly and transparently as, as I could. And I definitely have not, I definitely have not done it perfectly by a stretch of the imagination. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of the point, right? To, exactly. to stumble through it imperfectly and, and well, yeah. figure it out as you go. It, completely. So a lot of this record I'm doing is almost me like documenting that that process and you can even see in it the, the almost um like the two sides of, mm. of me fighting with each other because you have this one song that's like quite I mean, positive and set up against this other song that feels entirely cynical and kind of like the sounds i guess and you're like how do these two things exist mm. beside each other but i guess that's kind of the point it's like it's like they they do in some yeah. bizarre way because yeah i am I am that I am that person who wants to see the best and everything and the light and the good. But I also have had plenty of days more than more so than the the former where I have felt just darkness. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it's the, the the wrestle of that and trying to trying to figure through it. was benjamin hastings check out his new single feels like a blessing wherever you get your music and stay tuned up next it's your feedback change,
change Cause I can get a little slower I can stay forever as your hotel boy Some gold chains and the dresses you wear The old place, I can wait on you there Time can change, but I'll give you my number You're listening to Royal Otis. The song is Motels. Okay, it's time for your feedback. Last week, we got talking... What were we talking about? Awkward appointments. What what awkward appointment? Was it your dentist? I think Gab's had an awkward appointment or something. Or Jesse's hair cut. Yeah, oh, Jesse's haircut. That's what it barber, was. Barber, that was a little, little, a little, little too animated. A little much. Little, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we asked you for your awkward appointment experiences. You hit us up on Twitter at Relevant Podcast. And here's a few of our favorites. Um, I like this one from uh, Angela Green, Leaf's Chick Forever, maybe. Uh, she says, I had to go to a hospital to have surgery to remove my wisdom teeth a couple weeks after getting braces. Was told to strip naked and put on a hospital robe. Still confused as to why I couldn't wear underwear while they worked in my mouth. I Creepy. think you need to ask some more questions. Well, I, I will say this. Like I've, I have met Angela. I met her at a conference. <laughs> oh. She's been a longtime listener. She's, she lives in Canada. So maybe up there in Canada, their hospitals have different rules. She's a big Toronto fan, Toronto sports fan. Well, I do know that about her. The Canadian healthcare maybe needs to look into that because wow. I think you should be able to keep your clothes on. for that. When I got my wisdom removed, Nothing came off. Nothing. No, 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 except the wisdom teeth. Yeah. Just yeah. the wisdom teeth. Those wisdom are the only teeth. things yeah. that left my body. Yeah. <laughs> Kara Fleener <laughs> says she went with her boyfriend to give vaccines for a trip. He started getting lightheaded and passing out. So she went over to hold his hand. Then she got lightheaded and started passing out. The doctor had to catch her before she collapsed. I'm sure, they had a laugh when they left. Yeah. That's pretty bad. I'm going to read Anna's, you guys. I'm sorry. This is so... All the women in the world are feeling this discomfort that I'm about to say out loud here. Anna said she works at a home improvement store. Awesome. She said, let's just say having a gynecologist appointment and an appointment with the same gynecologist to help him in finishing out his new home in the same week. Awkward. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Anna. So uncomfortable. Oh, no. No. Yeah, that, that seems not ideal. It's like when you were a kid and you saw your teacher out in public and it was like, really disorienting but this is also worse because way worse so you're gonna call uh, you, you need to just have that doctor be in another town you just dr- <laughs> I'm, i go <laughs> once a hours. year i'm gonna drive a couple hours to go see him we're good to okay, go okay i i feel like i if i don't say this to you guys some of my friends are gonna listen and be like why didn't you tell them okay, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> this is very personal i can't believe i'm telling the whole world this oh, no. but if we could just keep it between the five of us okay. i just need y'all okay <laughs> Just us girls. So, What's going on? So, listen, I feel the uncomfortableness for Anna. That is weird. But you guys, <laughs> my doctor that I see once a year, I'm very past birthing years. I'm not having babies once a year, just taking care of my body. Um, he goes to our church. He's an elder at our church, and he's one of my husband's best friends. <laughs> no. Jamie, I do no. not know how you do that. I, no. I literally listen. Listen, I just say you're this. A I say, strong woman, Emily. I say it's the worst fifteen minutes of my entire year. But here's my reasoning. Okay, <sighs> if I need someone to tell me that I have cancer, I want it to come from someone that loves me. That's that is the only reason that I can still handle this awkward situation. Does he like chit okay. chat and tell you about something he and Aaron were talking about that week? Listen, and like, I'm telling you, it's the worst fifteen minutes of oh my, my year. Gosh, of however I, many, however many minutes are in a year. These are the 15 <laughs> that I want to have an outer body experience. I'm telling I'm you, drive three hours. You need to just change to a guy in Houston. That's it. Just I'm sorry, but like, like I just feel like I, I see it's uncomffortable. I made everybody on the show uncomfortable. I oh, apologize. yeah. Everything's yeah, just a screeching halt. I have no idea what yeah. to do right Corey, now. Corey, I mean, take it out. This was just a little girl <laughs> chat. This is a little I'll girl give, chat. <laughs> I'll give Rachel's anecdote here, but I think we're all just kind of trying to work ourselves out of stunned <laughs> silence. <laughs> Jesse, I, I'm going to go get some pastrami. Hold on. I'm be right back. R- R- Rachel <laughs> said, I had an eye appointment, got everything done, and got the glasses. Problem was, bad pre- bad prescription. It wasn't right. Did I call or change to get a fix? No question mark. Why? Anxiety. Rachel, wow. I... This isn't ordering like, uh, you know, a, 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 a steak at medium and they brought you well done. And you're like, you know, I'll power through. I don't want to create the awkwardness here. 
I feel like this is something you should probably address with your optometrist or else you're going to incur real damage yeah. to your eyes here. Yeah, I agree. It's awkward, but hey, it happens, you know? I'm pretty sure I've done this before. I had to do that on my last appointment. I had to go back a few days later and be like, these don't work. And then they changed it. So No, I've been the person where I'm pretty sure my prescription was just like a little bit off. And I just said, mm, my eyes will adjust and oh. just went back the next year. Well, my eyes are already bad anyways. You know, what's... It's fine. <laughs> to to confirm why you want to avoid the conflict, I called initially and the lady on the phone was very curt with me. Like, how dare I <laughs> impugn mm. the integrity of the optometrist? She was telling me, like, it takes your eyes a few days. I was like, ma'am, I have had glasses for 20 years. I know the adjustment time. This is not that. You know, I'm trying to explain to her, don't talk to me like I'm a 12-year-old. She started, she like yelled at me and then ended up at the end of this conversation hanging up on me. So... Maybe avoid the conflict. Mm. If optometrists are finicky people. Finicky people. And that's why I'd rather just go blind before I tell my optometrist <laughs> that they got my prescription. <laughs> Seems. <laughs> can't argue with the logic. Yeah. yeah. The weird thing, <laughs> Canadian optometrists, you have to be naked for them to do the eye. <laughs> eye it's oh just really, just really the weird. There. Canada is not on my move list. <laughs> it's very, oh my very, very strange loss up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll do it for last week's. There's more where that came from. Go check it out. There's a really long thread. Uh, if you want to go, if you've got an hour and some popcorn, you just want to settle in. <laughs> the scars involved and yeah. Anyway. All right. It's time for this week's. Editorial question of the week. Okay. Well, earlier in the show, we got talking about cuisine and how the Lord provides pastrami. And you know, like you can have an empty house and have no food, but you find a way. I mean, there's always something. So what we want to know is your creative solutions. What do you eat when you have no food in the house? Like what's the weirdest thing maybe you've put together? Maybe what's your go-to? I need to go get groceries, but I haven't yet meal. Like we want some tips here. So, you know, you got scrambled eggs, got some cheeses, you can make a meal, you know? So we want to know the weirdest thing maybe you've done or your go-to for when your pantry is bare. What do you eat? I feel like we should put meal in air quotes just because yeah. right. I, I, I have one that meals. like a lot of people when I tell them this, they're like, that sounds disgusting. And I make no apologies. Canned tuna. Oh, no. Old Bay. Ramen. <laughs> you got a nice little ramen bowl right there. What's Old Bay? Exactly. It's this weird spice that they do in Virginia. That's that a seasoning. The people in Virginia oh, think I've everybody knows it. what it is. I was up there I'm, and they're like, how do you not know Old Bay? I was like, because I'm not weird. What are you talking about, Old Bay? Wait, why do I? I know what Old Bay is. I don't oh, know Oh, I why. can see it right how here. It's a seasoning. Old Bay? <laughs> don't, I've never seen this <laughs> see, before in my entire life. The thing life. about Virginians is they, are, they don't comprehend the fact that some people have never heard of Old Bay. It's <laughs> shocking. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> shocking. It says on here, you can get on Amazon, it's for seafood. Crabs, shrimp, chicken. Yeah, I'd never seen this before in my entire it's life. It's amazing. Jamie, I'm going to send you some old... Cameron, you had some old bay. I did I think it was on French bay. fries. It was pretty good. Made. It was pretty good. Yeah. It's very good. Jamie, I'm going to have to order you some old bay. <laughs> it's celery salt, red Don't peppers, too much. black peppers, and paprika. Sounds good. Yeah, it's spice. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. It's incredible. It's on everything here. Anyway, canned mm. tuna, old bay, ramen, delightful little ramen bowl. You know? Cheap, I love too. It. I have like two year old cup of noodles in the back of the pantry. That's like my, like, I know it's always there. Like if, if I'm ever like really out of everything, I can always have a cup of noodles. They don't go bad. They're there forever. We all need those in our house just in case. Need a couple things. I, yeah. I eat them all the time. I love them. I what love cup of cup noodles. noodles. Really? I love it. I eat them, uh, you know, probably three or four a week. Jesse, do yourself a favor. You're, you're pushing middle-aged. Do yourself a favor and look at the sodium label on the back. It is it is a month and a half's worth of sodium in one cup of noodles. I I am okay with that. It's a <laughs> sacrifice I'm willing to make. Yeah. All right, hit us up on Twitter at Relevant Podcast, or uh, we'll post this also over on the Relevant IG stories. Hit us up there as well. We'll read our favorites next week. I'd also like to I'd also like to publicly apologize for whatever you were doing while you're listening to the show, <laughs> the way I made you feel. When I did the confession about my you doctor. You should apologize for nothing, Jamie. You're just being <laughs> I, I would just like to confess. I mean, I would just like to apologize if I hurt, if I ruined your day. I apologize. I mean, Cameron warned us at the beginning of the show, this was going to be a This was going to be a one. little spicy and today. Really, you were just delivering on the promise. <laughs> I have been doing, Jesse and I have been doing this show since 2005. I literally can sit down 
and tell you exactly how the show is going to go in the first 10 seconds because of how I feel and what I'm seeing on my screen. I can tell when things are a little left of center and today yeah. was one of those days. So Isn't left of center way more fun anyways? I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. Great. Until Ben Hastings quits on the show and then we have no guest today. So glad that he stuck around. I appreciate it, Ben. Before we wrap things up, I want to thank Ben Hastings for joining us today. Make sure to check out his brand new single, Feels Like a Blessing. It's out now. Also, make sure to check out RelevantMagazine.com every day uh, where we are publishing new content at the intersection of faith, life, culture, and justice. While you're there, sign up for Relevant Plus, our ad-free subscription service, which gives you unlimited access and ad-free viewing at RelevantMagazine.com and ad-free edition of this podcast released early as well as an exclusive subscriber podcast each week and an ad-free enhanced edition of our digital magazine and more uh, plans start as low as 250 a month and we would love the support it is the best way to experience our content go check it out relevant plus at relevantmagazine.com. also if you haven't been to relevantstore.com in a while go check it out we got great merch uh, some podcast fan stuff uh, magazine archives and a lot more go check out relevantstore.com and if you like our show tell us uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on social media hit us up on twitter at relevant podcast you can also message us at the relevant magazine ig account um, also wherever you listen rate it and review it uh, those stars and those positive reviews help the algorithm help other people discover it if you don't like the show why are you still listening no I'm kidding alright on that note we'll wrap it up I'm Cameron Strang I'm Jesse Carey I'm Jamie Ivey I'm Emily Brown we'll see you next time have a great week everyone for listening to The Relevant Podcast. Check out our features, interviews, and news updates every day at relevantmagazine.com. And make sure to follow Relevant on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest. For more great podcasts, browse the shows on The Relevant Podcast Network, which you can find at our site. And while you're there, don't miss the all-new era of Relevant Magazine. A new issue releases every other month at relevantmagazine.com. It was already sort of congealing into the bottom layer of pastrami at that point. Relevant Podcast Network.